Born Carl Carnegie, he became legendary as Tom Carnegie, the booming voice of the world's most famous race course. Tonight, we celebrate the life of a true icon, a broadcaster, a man dedicated to Indiana high school basketball. Tom Carnegie, the voice, remember. From RTV6 Indianapolis, this is a special presentation. Tom Carnegie, the voice remembered. Good evening, I'm Dave First, sports director here at RTV6, a title certainly not lost on this occasion. It's with sadness, with a lot of pride though, that we bring you this special presentation because while Tom Carnegie was a voice to millions who heard him speak at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, he was a longtime friend of folks at this TV station. While you heard about the Speedway, you saw him right here. It was 1946, Tom Carnegie was hired to announce a local antique auto show. 26-year-old work the mic, Wilbur Shaw, then president of the Speedway, couldn't turn away from the rich, dulcet tones of Tom's voice. So he and Tony Hallman asked Carnegie to join the public address team at the Speedway, that's Tom, in the upper right-hand corner. He called himself a true rookie at the track that year. Nobody had any help. Uh, nobody gave me any help or anything like that. I just had those names and numbers, like calling the football game. <laughs> And I somehow got through it and satisfied Wilbur Shaw and Tony Hallman because they asked me to come back next year, and I've, you know, I've been there ever since. But there's way more to it than that. Channel 6, or WFBM as it was known then, first aired the 500 in 1949. It's her to be the number 99 challenging sex. He's got him from the outside. And then beefed up its coverage by hiring Carnegie in 1953 and he shook it up from the start. One of the first things that I wanted to do was to have a trackside show during the month of May, live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And the station was more than happy to give me the time. Trackside reports bringing the news and newsmakers live to central Indiana. I was always grateful that uh, we were the first station to have trackside or have a daily program from the speedway. Now it's starting to hail. A segment that's weathered the storm. This is my was... hailstorm. <laughs> I never in my life. <laughs> Five decades of trackside six programming. Oh, gosh, it's at 6 p.m. They'll have to tune out of our news to see it. Well, what the heck? A tradition that continues today. Congratulations, Tony Kanan, the hardest working man out here at the speedway. Tom Carnegie reporting from the 19th Olympia. Carnegie also brought the world to Indianapolis. He traveled to Tokyo to cover the 1964 Olympics and then to Mexico in 1968. Sharon Wickman of Fort Wayne, Indiana is the winner! After Jim Clark won the 1965 Indy 500, it was Carnegie who helped produce the documentary The Flying Scot, paying a visit to Clark's home in Scotland. The appeal of money certainly is not the lure of your type of racing. I started racing, I think I'd probably be racing today. Uh, I, I would have been racing today, probably not in the scale I am, if nobody had ever paid me to race. It was the first driver feature shown on national TV in the U.S. I'm braking slightly on the corner there. It's a bit, it's a bit twitchy because you're in the corner. IndyCar Racing made its first trip to the Far East in 1967. Tom was there too. This is the program, the Indianapolis International Champion Race in Japan. It's all in Japanese. We'll have to revert to English notes to size up the field. The winner that day, Jackie Stewart. Comments about the great race you ran. Well, uh, races are always hard, I suppose. Uh, it seems that sometimes the ones you win are maybe not as hard as others. Back home again, it was more than motorsports. Chatting it up with Butler coach Tony Hinkle, he was on the PA for the famous 1954 Milan High School Championship, leading to a cameo on the iconic movie Hoosier. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the championship game of the Indiana State High School Basketball Tournament. And now, the starting lineup for the Huskers. And try to get it inside His passion for the sport helped start the annual Hall of Fame Classic in Newcastle. Plus, there was a nighttime fascination as well. You know, Tom, you and I 
are the kind of guys that, that over all these years we've been in the business, all those guys taking shots at you yeah. and all those guys taking shots at me, we just get by on our brains, don't we? <laughs> I mean, we don't worry about our bodies. Both of us have destroyed bodies, but we've made it with our heads, Tom. Now, aren't you proud that both of us have been able to do that? Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful, Bobby. <laughs> the track is open for qualification. We're ready. Let's go. But for Carnegie, the track was where it was at. As the speeds rose, so did the popularity, and Tom helped with the drama of it all. Hi, Sonny. Here he is, pounding down the straightaway toward the yard of bricks, and he is on. In the first place, it took me 10, 15 years to have any confidence that what I was saying was right. And then you begin to realize that this is theater. It's speed theater. And so then, growing up in the theater like I did, you began to do those little things. And then when somebody said, hey, I like that, when you said, he's on it, That's great. well, then why not use it again? The catchphrase quickly caught on. He's on it. And he's on it. But it was only the start. It's a new track record, a new track record for the old Night Eagle, 194.932. It is a new track record. It's a new track record. So many great slogans that he's had, one of them being Mario was slowing down. I know, I hated that. <laughs> I hated to hear that. It's a new track record. You know, it's, it just, I can't do it the way he does, obviously. And it's a new track record. In the later years, Tom Carnegie's own mark at the Speedway was one of a kind. A 64-year run, never to be matched, and always appreciated. Tom Carnegie is the voice of the Indy 500. My first memories of Tom, really, him coming out to Albuquerque and, and interviewing my dad and my Uncle Bobby. Uh, dad put him in a dune buggy yep, yep. along with my sisters and I, and we all went for a ride in the dune buggy, and Tom was just laughing the whole time. You know, it's one of those things where we have known him for so many years. It's just hard to tell which came first, the chicken or the egg. You know, Tom Carnegie and the answers just go together. You could take him to Daytona, you could take him to Sonoma, it doesn't matter. You take him and put him on a microphone at a racetrack, and if you know anything about racing, you know who that is on the other end of the microphone. When you're talking about the Indianapolis 500 uh, and the personalities that have made this uh, event, I don't think anyone will ever be able to equal uh, Tom Carnegie. This is his home. This is his life. Uh, and like I say, he watched it come from nothing to the greatest sport in the world. The race, a great American institution. But there's no doubt about it. Tom Carnegie was one too. It will always be the roar of the engines and the cheers of the fans. But somehow it won't quite be the same. Still to come, when he wasn't reporting on Channel 6, it was six decades at the Speedway that helped Tom make his mark. We'll catch up with three-time 500 champ Bobby Unzer, Speedway historian Donald Davidson. For almost three decades through 2006, I looked forward to a reunion with my dear friend Tom Carnegie each May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Before and after the Armed Services Day experience, we shared thoughts about our families, our duties, our opportunities. I'm immensely grateful for the sustained enthusiasm and encouragement which he has expressed to me over many years. And I am hopeful that I was able in a small way to give him some appreciation of how much his words and deeds meant to me. Tom Carnegie was a tremendous ambassador for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and over his 60-year career he, he, he made many friends and was active in the community and 
uh, represented us well, and and uh, you, you just you know you, you you can't replace that, and you can't replace that sort of voice, and and uh, just a, a pleasure of a guy to work with, and always professional, and and um, just uh, it's going to be a big loss. Welcome back. For a guy who didn't know a lick about auto racing, Tom Carnegie will forever be associated with it from his catchphrases to the drama he built by telling the stories of the day in his own very unique way. Many times, the only way to know what was happening at the world's greatest race course, even if you were there, was to hear it from Tom Carnegie. The Speedway with this tribute just a few years ago. Good morning, everyone. Greeting you on behalf of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And thanking you for your attendance. It is a new track record. It's a new track record. I play to the audience, actually. And um, if I got them excited, how do you get them excited? Well, you've become excited. And it's still going up. 45 and 9100 seconds. The speed 196. One of my favorite days was when Tom Sneva told me the night before on radio and on television that I was working at the time that he would do 200 miles an hour the next day. And I said, what? You're kidding me. And he said, no, you watch and I will. And sure enough, I was ready for it. And the very first lap, he got over 200 miles an hour. So what do you do? You're excited. And he gave me a chance to say, and it's, it's a new, new track record. And then lap number two, still faster. And you won't believe it. You know? <laughs> and another new track record. That's two track records in the first two laps. Third lap, still higher. Fourth lap. And it's a new all-time speed record. You know, added embellished words. And uh, I got more fun out of it than anybody, but the crowd was really there for that occasion. That's one I remember. I was ready to quit, because that was the highlight of my day, my year, my life. Tom made friends up and down the pit area, all around Gasoline Alley. He was a favorite to A.J. Foyt. In fact, Tom was there for that emotional interview when Foyt retired back in 1993. It's a hard decision, but it comes a time. The Unzers were a favorite of Tom's, too. He got to know him really well, including Uncle Bobby. Bobby Unzer on the track and moving. Carnegie's career spanned the decades. Not unlike Bobby Unzer, he won the 500 in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. The three-time champ joined us via satellite from Albuquerque. I met Tom when I was just really young. When I went to Indianapolis for the first time, I got to know him. And the Unzers, that's Al and Bobby mainly, uh, talked Tom into coming to New Mexico. And believe it or not, he kind of became a New Mexican. From Victory Lane of the Indianapolis 500 to Speedway Park in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Carnegie made several trips, and before he knew it, he was saying the name Unzer quite often. It's the track record for the old tonight, Eagle, 194. Generations will go by and they'll still remember Tom's voice. God, he had that magic voice. I don't mean this to, to sound corny or disrespectful at all, but I mean, it, it's, it's just not the same without Carnegie's voice echoing around that facility, is it? He just became a part of the track. He was just like the pavement, just like when the bricks were there. You know, you just think about how many millions and millions and millions of people that have heard that man talk, and they just all adored him. Tom, uh, when I was racing here, the I was... The sentiment kind of still felt man. today. Somebody sitting in the grandstand, any of the race drivers, the mechanics, never heard anybody say anything derogatory about Tom Carnegie. Nothing but good things all the time. And of course, it made me happy because I like to call him my friend. 
so great to have uh, Bobby Unser's perspective. And when you talk about perspective, as Brad Brown joins us tonight, uh, no better perspective than to get it from one Donald Davidson. Yeah, there are a few people that know the history of the Speedway like Donald <laughs> Davidson does. I had a chance to sit down with him. You can see the full interview online at theindychannel.com, but we'll give a taste of it here as I asked Donald to put Tom Carnegie in the pantheon of Indianapolis Motor Speedway and where he stands with the greats that have graced the Brickyard. It seemed like regardless of the year, regardless of the day, mm -hmm. the voice yeah. and the action matched so well. you have an explanation for that? Just the fact that the, the voice was uh, so synonymous with the track that I remember being here early on the first qualification day and then you'd hear a click and a hum and then you'd hear testing one, two, three. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and you'd get this enormous cheer. You've seen this event evolve over the span of four or five decades. Pole day became really second only to race day in the drama and the mm -hmm. excitement here as a big event because of the speeds they were putting up, but Tom's flavor, Tom's voice really added to that. I firmly believe that. Yeah, were the records being broken? Yes, but the delivery you know, done by a lot of other people uh, with all, you know, all due respects. Uh, he just was able to pull up this, you know, with this thundering, roaring voice that he had, and it just made it more exciting. He said, uh, it's theater, Donald, it's theater. From the Motor Speedway to a motion picture cameo, Tom Carnegie made it happen through his impact in high school basketball. True Hoosier hysteria when we come back. Tom Carnegie was the voice of television and the vision of television. Without Tom Carnegie, as from 1946 till 1997 when they changed the multi-class, we would not have had Hoosier hysteria the way it is. Every place I traveled when I was playing with Philip 66 and later on, they all knew about Indiana high school basketball, and a lot of that is attributed to Tom Carnegie and his enthusiasm. Great to hear from Bobby Plump, who as he hit that shot in 1954, heard Tom's voice afterwards, naming little old Milan High School as the state champions. In fact, Carnegie's career is very much intertwined with Indiana's first love, high school basketball. He was among a group that made sure no one would ever forget how important the sport is to this state. Jason Spell spent the day at the Hall of Fame Museum in Newcastle to find out more. That's the High school basketball is more than a sport in Indiana. It's an institution. And it was on the state's hallowed hardwoods that Tom Carnegie brought Indiana's game into Indiana homes. Tom Carnegie from Arlington for Channel 6 Sports. The technology that uh, increased and became more available as we went from the era of radio to the era of televisions being in every home, he was there along the way. He did come to literally every corner of the state of Indiana when it was March and people wanted to know what was going on in the state tournament. They got that information and they saw Tom Carnegie there. For 42 years, Carnegie called the state's high school basketball championship, but his contributions to Hoosier hysteria go far beyond play-by-play. -play. In 1962, with the help of Ransom Ray Johnson, Carnegie created the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. And he has told me, personally and professionally, this is one of, if not the proudest, uh, organizations and things he's been a part of that, that, that he has cherished throughout his uh, career. Not only was he a great leader, but he could speak to the common man, and the common man believed him, and uh, that, that he just related to Hoosiers overall. Whatever the topic was, that he related, and Hoosiers related back to him. Still to come, Channel 6 Memories, with a colleague who spent 35 years with it. The legendary Howard Caldwell joins us as Tom Carnegie, the voice remembered, continues. Well, when we talk about Tom Carnegie, especially here at WRTV or WFBM, back in the day, yeah. you have to talk to Howard Caldwell. The News with Howard Caldwell. Good evening. Like Carnegie, Caldwell stood the test of time. Hired in 1959, 
retired in 1996. Do you wonder where Channel 6 would have been without a guy like Tom? Well, I don't know, but I, I, it wouldn't have been as good. From pacers to racers, from Larry Legend to legends in other ways. This is the story on Channel 6. Tom delivered it all. He could be so uh, funny. I've heard stories about the floor directors he would pick on. Absolutely. And, he would know. give them a test. Yeah. If that floor director was new, he would say to them, I wish you'd stand over just a little further and get me on this camera, not that camera. You know, it's, you know, it's like going through a fraternity or something. You gotta, you gotta, That's what putting through you, initiation. You gotta That's earn your did. keep a little bit. <laughs> That's right. Unique bonds, including his rapport with Butler coach Tony Hinkle. He and Tony had a very special relationship. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Didn't they? Yes, they did. And Tony was pretty good at a comeback, too. He said, Tony, who do you think you can, is going to win this one? <laughs> and Tony said very seriously, Tom, the team that puts the ball in the basket will win the game. <laughs> the first news helicopter in Indiana, Skycam 6. As Channel 6 grew, so did Tom Carnegie, making history together. If there was one word that described Tom in his years in broadcasting, what, what would it be? Uh, glory, I guess. A wonderful attitude, a wonderful feeling uh, when Carnegie was talking. A friendship to all? Friendship to all. That would be good. His voice was a friend to the millions who heard him at the Speedway, but it's his personality that pretty much made him family. So on behalf of his friends and family here at RTV6, we hope you enjoyed a stroll down memory lane. We hope you'll always remember.